Okay, and uh, so that's dynamic form generation. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to um, put some of the analysis of Grasshopper back into your model as a visualization. So I'm going to show you now that we've created this panel system how to visualize some aspects of these panels back into your model. And that's really what we want to do, right? We don't want to just create crazy form. We want to be able to take some measure of that form and figure out if it's performing the way we want it to perform. So as a really simple example, I am just going to take the area of each panel and I'm going to represent uh, those areas uh, through both color and text back in the model. So we can create these kind of um, data-rich uh, visualizations. Uh, I think the first thing I'll do is text. All right, so you can put text into the model through what's called a tag. Uh, if you double click on your canvas, type in tag. There's two types of tags, uh, two-dimensional and three-dimensional. I would just use a 3D tag. This lets us really set the size and location orientation of our text um, pretty, uh, in a pretty detailed way. So before I get to that, I actually need to generate the data that I want. And the data that I want is the areas of all these surfaces. And I'm just going to pass them all into another area component. It's the same thing we did before. Um, this will just take the area of all of the panels. Another kind of uh, nice feature is that the area node will give you the centroid of each panel at the same time. And we're going to use these centroids to locate our text uh, tags within the model. Okay, so now we have this tag component, and we can go through all the inputs that it's asking for. First is the location, and to start off with, I'll just pass these centroids into the location. So now it's going to create a tag uh, at each of these centroids of our panels. And then it's looking for the tag itself. So this is the text. I'm going to pass the area. You see already it's generated some text. Basically, start at each point and pass the area and since we have this one-to-one -one relationship between areas and centroids, it's coming from the same panel, you're guaranteed that those things will uh, line up. It's a little bit messy now, so I might want to round those figures uh, into whole numbers. So I can just use the round component. Uh, you can find that in math, but it's easier to just type in round. Uh, so you can pass all the areas into this and this can round it and it can also give you the lower number or the higher number. So we'll just pass in the rounded integers Oops, into the T parameter. I see it's a little bit nicer. Uh, and then there's also a size parameter. And I'll just set this to a slider. Start at 3. Make it a little bit bigger. And then here you have justification. So you can tell it how you want to justify. Right now it's bottom left, so starting at the corner and generating. I might want to do. Uh, I might want to center it on those points, so it's the same for all the panels, so I'll just do middle center. Okay, so this is pretty good. Uh, the only thing now is that it's kind of overlapping with our panels, which is fine. Um, since we have a little bit of time, I'll just go through um, how to solve that. In the final definition, I kind of make all the text go a little bit outside of the panels, uh, which we can do now. Um, so to do that, we just need to move the location where the tags are being generated. Right now, they're just generating the centroids of those panels. We just want to take the centroid and move it away from the panel. And the way we do that is we move it along the normal vector of the panel. Right. So each of these is a surface. It has some vector that's pointing away from that surface. And we can get those vectors um, for surfaces by going to the Surface tab, Analysis and evaluate surface. So here we have our surfaces. And we need to give this uh, a location on the surface. Right, so the location is, it works as like a kind of coordinate on your, on your panel or on your surface. All surfaces have a U and a V coordinate. So in this, you might try to find a specific location on your surface, but in this case, we just want any position because we're dealing with flat, flat planes. Um, so to set this UV, you can just right click go to set one point, and just type in zero in Rhino. And this will default to the kind of the, the, lowest, the, the uh, lowest left corner of the panel. And what it's going to give you is the point at that location and the normal vector, which is what we want. So this is a series of vectors. There's one vector for every panel that's telling us which direction uh, it's facing. 
Uh, on a side note, if you want to visualize these vectors when you're doing sun analysis and all these other kind of analyses, it helps to understand uh, the orientation of different surfaces in your model. So a quick way to visualize these um, normals is by creating a line from each one in that direction. If we go into curves, primitives, we have all these different ways to construct curves. And one of them is a line SDL, which will let us create a line from a start point, a distance, and, or a direction, and a length. Right? So as start points, we can use these uh, centroids. All right, so we're going to create a line from the center of every surface. So you can see now it's creating these um, little line segments. And by default, it's just doing them one unit distance in the z direction. For direction, we're going to set it to these normals. So now you can see that all these little lines have oriented themselves to the normal of the surface. And for the length, we can just set a slider so we can control the length of those lines. Now we have this kind of dynamic representation of the orientation of all of our surfaces, which might be useful later for analysis. Okay, so that's kind of a tangent, no pun intended. Um, so now we're actually, what we actually want to do is use those normals to move the text away from our uh, planes. So here we have these centroids. First thing we want to do is we want to move all these points, taking these normal directions uh, as the amount to move. So this is exactly what we did before. We have translate, we have this move component. For the geometry, we want to plug in these centroid points. And for the translation vector, uh, we'll just plug in this normal. So this is already going to move it somewhat, but we actually want to control the amount that it moves. So somewhere in here, we're going to plug in a node to set the length of that vector. So we already have a vector in the direction. But we want to be able to set the length of it. So we want to tell it how much to move away from the surface. Um, so in vector, in your vector tools, you have this thing called amplitude. I can just start typing in amplitude. And this will basically take in uh, a vector. So here's our vectors and a number which will designate the amount that we want it to move. And we'll just plug in this value here. So it'll take all these vectors and tell them to be 10 units long. And then this is what we'll plug into our translation. So you see now we moved all those points from the centroid to the edge of that line. And the only reason it's on that line is because we're using this 10 to set both the length of the line and the amount of movement. So once we have those moved points, we can plug those into our location. And now our areas are off of the model. Uh, we can hide some of this stuff so we can just see the text. And we can set this distance to kind of make sense with our model. OK, so that's one way to um, and the feedback data that you're getting from grasshoppers. This can be areas of panels, or they can be anything else. They can be the orientation itself. It can be sunlight exposure or anything like that. You can take that data, you can put it back into your model. And at any point, you can actually bake these directly in. So right now, these are just in grasshoppers, so nothing actually exists in Rhino. But you can take this tag and uh, bake it just like you would any other object, and now these are actually objects in Rhino. You can edit them just like any text object. Okay, so that's one example of uh, feeding uh, analysis data back into Rhino.